right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I just want to welcome everybody. This is going to be our inaugural podcast, Decentralized Talk podcast. So just a little background on us. We're three longtime friends, uh, college buddies, and we all have found a passion for kind of all things crypto. So uh, what we're going to try to do is uh, present to you a podcast that's funny, that's upbeat, uh, and that gives you a little bit of information and kind of uh, news and opinion on uh, crypto market new coins, and the coin space in general. So I'm Brandon Suttles. I own cleanuphouston.com, and I am the uh, social media director for masteringbitcoins.com. And with that, I will pass it on to Mr. Dustin Prater. So guys, I'm Dustin. Um, I am a um, IT guy for a uh, medium-sized business here in uh, Texas. Um, been buying bitcoins altcoins for you know three or four months now and uh got hooked on it um i like day trading them hodling them um looking at them uh wishing i'd bought them and uh yeah just uh overall have a, a big interest in them but uh i'll uh, shoot you over to heston and uh let him tell you a little bit about himself how you doing guys glad to be here my name is heston um i'm also an it professional um, but I've been in the crypto space about half a year, and as soon as I learned about blockchain technology, I was I was hooked. I was obsessed. Um, and then once I learned the investment opportunities, I was in the game. So uh, I like them gains, guys. And let's get into some crypto news. All right, cool. Let's start off with South Korea. So I think this week was was pretty rattling for a lot of new people. So as as we came to the uh, the end of 2017. Um, I think there's a lot of people that were pretty amped up and pretty pretty ready for big gains in 2018. And that hasn't really panned out here in the beginning of Q1. And a lot of it has to do with South Korea uh, out, uh, outlawing these exchanges. Um, and so th the basic gist of this is that the minister of uh, let me take a look. The justice minister came out and basically set up a situation where he said he was considering a ban on cryptocurrency trading, which, as we know, is pretty much impossible, right? Because you can't block cryptocurrency trading. People would just go onto a VPN. But I think it scared the market pretty significantly. Oh, yeah. Drove the market down pretty good. Yeah. And uh, I think this. This kind of stuff is going to happen uh, throughout the, our, our journey in the crypto world. Um, governments don't like cryptocurrency for the most part um, because it it goes against their 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 currency, their fiat currencies, currencies that they push. Um, so it's a threat to them and the banking system of that specific country. Um, we saw it with China a few months ago, um, and the market kind of did the same thing. It dips pretty hard. People freak out. They say, oh, my God, this is the end. I better sell before this bubble bursts. Um, but then we saw the market correct itself. So um, I think that's starting to happen right now. Uh, we saw a pretty big dip when this news came out of South Korea. Um, but the market kind of corrected itself just just like always. Um, so I don't think it's that big of, big of a worry for us. Yeah. Great buy point, really. Yeah. See, anytime you get a dip like that, it's a great buy point. And, I mean, a uh, little – I know, Tater, you're the – conspiracy theorist here but uh you know it, i i tend to agree with it to a point i think you know at, at some point you know these guys are investing in it um are they you know potentially driving the market down on purpose to get an entry point for themselves <laughs> yeah i think that's a good point so what I'm just talking about it is uh so like in the, the last time we saw the big chinese uh chinese downturn uh happen everybody freaked out uh Within 48 hours of the big Chinese drop, we had Jamie Dimon, all right, who's the chief executive at JP Morgan, come out and what did he say? That uh, Bitcoin was the biggest bubble, is going to be the biggest bubble in history, and so it's a total fraud. So, incidentally, I mean, you know, a resident conspiracy theorist, that's fine, um, but <laughs> at the same at the same uh, time as the as the big Korean market situation, it's almost an identical situation comes out. Um, CEO of uh, uh, and pre or present owner of Berkshire Hathaway, and and kind of poo poo's uh, Bitcoin. So I mean I think there's a lot to that. I uh, I I agree. I think there is a little to that, and the 
the buy-in and you know it just it creates great entry points for everybody really um with that and uh with china as well you know they they came out and said the same thing and then they use that as a as leverage for regulation you know so it's not necessarily a bad thing to regulate i mean it's not a good thing in the same respect but um you know, I think you're going to see probably more governments move in to regulate. Um, you know, I saw an article today about the U.S. Um, was afraid that Bitcoin is beca- is going to become the new uh, Cayman Islands, where people are using it to avoid taxes. I'll so, I mean, <laughs> I, heard I mean, it's it's definitely a possibility. And, you know, um, pay your taxes, and then they won't have to regulate <laughs> I mean, I think regulation is is a good thing uh, to a certain extent. You know, I think uh, regulation will put a lot of people's mind at ease, knowing that uh, that the government is trying to watch their back. At least that's what the government spin on it is going to be. Um, so, no, I think regulation is a good thing uh, as long as they don't they don't try to control the market. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always going to be of the mindset of, of lower regulation. So I, I'm uh, I'm maybe a resident conspiracy theorist. I'm also a resident libertarian. Uh, so um, I I think if, if it is the new tax haven, right, that's all the better for us. I think being early investors and for anybody that's watching the podcast right now, any early investor, uh, you, you compare Bitcoin, they talk about it being the wild, wild west, and they say, you know, you got to be scared of, of these big drops um, in, the, uh, in the market from the Chinese exchange and the Korean exchanges. But uh, the, the wild, wild west. Uh, I mean, if you look at it from the broad perspective, was was crazy in the time, but it it ushered in the industrial revolution, which was one of the greatest points of growth growth in in human history. So I think we're. I mean, honestly, I th- I think it's not a stretch to say that we're on the verge of something very similar here. I agree. Very well, could be. All right, so uh, let's talk about Ripple. This is something I know significantly less about. I know you two are. Uh, pretty pretty big into ripple tell me about MoneyGram. um well it was announced a few days ago uh that ripple is going to be partnering with MoneyGram. uh MoneyGram is one of the largest uh providers of currency transfers across countries and in america uh, walmart also uses MoneyGram for its payment systems so MoneyGram is huge in america and that partnership is definitely um definitely going to help Ripple um, get notoriety in the space. They they've also they they partnered with American Express a, a few months ago, I think in November. Um, and so that I mean those those partnerships they're just going to build the foundation uh, behind Ripple, and you know it it just gives people peace of mind knowing that these these large companies are relying on the ripple network to increase speeds and lower transaction fees so it's it's really really good news for ripple yeah well i've always liked ripple just because it is more of a centralized cryptocurrency and i know uh, i saw something where charlie lee said that ripple shouldn't even technically be considered a cryptocurrency um, because of how centralized it is but it creates a great entry point into big business that way. I mean, businesses aren't gonna want something so decentralized where all their information is out there on the market. You know, they don't want, they might gain an edge by, you know, getting something for half a cent less than their competitor. And if that's on the blockchain for the competitor to see, then, you know, they're losing that competitive edge um, to something that's super decentralized. And Ripple, which is more centralized, you know, I think it's going to allow it to usher into the, you know, the big business markets um, easier and quicker. Um, although I did also see where in 2018, Ripple's, one of their big pushes was to become more decentralized. So, I mean, uh, <laughs> it's 22 there on my, on my own pitch. But <laughs> yeah, I, I've always considered Ripple the anti-cryptocurrency because of its centralization. But, you know, it's all good. They're, they're trying to solve a problem. I get it. Yeah. Um, What's the price point of Ripple right now? Uh, How much? Around two dollars. Okay. I like Ripple, but the the only thing that scares me about Ripple is that you need a hundred billion people to invest a dollar, essentially for it to, for the price to move up a dollar. 
True. And with so many coins. Look at their yes. volume, though. And, and really, it's even it's even more than that, right? Because you're talking about seventy percent of, of Ripple is already owned. Is that right? So, yeah, it's it's around there. I'm not sure the exact percentage, but yeah, the, a lot of it's um, owned by the, the the founders of it. The founders. Yeah. So that means you're really only working with you're only working with the with with the remaining thirty percent. Um, or unless I have that backwards, but but uh, I don't know. Ripple, Ripple's okay. I think Ripple for, for me is a hedge against decentralization. So if you if you really you know if you're really like me, like a believer in the concept and and the, and the drive behind the crypto space, then I th I think you'd have to just from a um, ideological perspective, you'd have to steer clear of Ripple. But um, there's definitely a part of me, and I'm sure you guys feel it too. I mean, being investors in Ripple, that says like there is a, a high probability that at the end of the day, these big governments and these big banks are going to get together and just try to figure out a way to dominate this space, and it's probably going to be with Ripple. Yep. Yeah. I, I there there's definitely things I don't like about the centralization of Ripple, but um, if there's going to be a cryptocurrency that that governments and banks get behind. Um, it's going to be Ripple. And you can already see it with the mass media. They they talk about Ripple. When they talk about cryptocurrencies, they're talking about Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ripple. And, you know, that it, because it's centralized, it's going to get a lot of love from the big banks. Yeah, yeah it definitely is. Which... Transaction fees, just uh, just briefly. So transaction fees, that's like one of the biggest the biggest claim to fame for all all cryptocurrencies, right? Is that low transaction fees? You can transfer money from anywhere to anywhere almost instantly at, uh, at at fractions and fractions and fractions of a dollar, right? Versus the traditional MoneyGram exchange uh, charging a lot more money. So that, so that's interesting. So to me, the 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 MoneyGram business model is. I mean, the, the 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 full business model of MoneyGram is charging fees on wire transactions. So how are they going to make money? Right. How, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Are they? I, I don't know. Are they? Are they just seeing that this is the future and they're trying to jump out in front of it, or are they saying? Well, um, now, I don't know. I, I saw where MoneyGram has partnered with Ripple, but they haven't actually picked up Ripple and are using it. True. There, it's more of a test here so what they'll probably do and i mean this is just a total guess on my part is they'll use ripple to transfer and they'll upcharge you an extra fee you yeah. know so it'd be cheaper for you to just transfer using litecoin to your buddy or bitcoin yeah. but if you were to go use moneygram they would use ripple in the background charge you a fee to use ripple and then transfer your money that way so that's, it gets faster that's exactly yeah. what i think is going to happen so it's cheaper for moneygram but not necessarily cheaper for you you know exactly that would be interesting, or maybe there's just a maybe there's a lot bigger margin in Ripple too. So maybe they've got a, a significantly larger margin using uh, cryptocurrency using Ripple, and um, they'll be able to pass that on to the consumer. I doubt it. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, so another big thing that popped popped up in the news today was uh, Kraken. Man, Kraken went to shit. Mm. Uh, basically, I mean, it did. I mean, it completely dropped out. I had people uh, texting me, um, tweeting me left and right, uh, saying, you know, is your Kraken uh, down or can you get your money? I'm freaking out and I, everything I have is in Kraken. Um, so, release uh, the Kraken. Release the Kraken. I think it's more like Moby Dick. Kraken. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, they went down. Um, Coinbase went down recently too um, from overuse, and I mean, you've seen other exchanges stop accepting users, um, which is crazy to me because you know users is how they drive their their money. So um, it's just it's such a big thing right now. Everybody's getting in, and I mean, you know, these exchanges aren't ready for the volume that they're getting yet. Yep, I think we're gonna see it more and more, honestly. Um, just the last <clears throat> since. Let's see, it probably took off, I'd say, June, July time, uh, where the volume just exploded. And um, these these exchanges have been around for a while, and they've never experienced volume like this, so they're not ready for it. And now that it's just, the volume is just getting larger, um, and so the, we're going to see these shutdowns you know, every once in a while, or at least slowdowns or temporary you know, blackouts, we're, I think we're going to see that a lot, and that's not good, that's not, you know, that's, that's going to turn a lot of people off, but 
you know, if these exchanges, if they're going to last, you know, for the long haul, they'll figure out how to, you know, uh, work with the volume. Yeah, definitely. I think, and word to the wise out there. So everybody watching the podcast right now, just take a second. If, if you're, if you're new at this and you're trying to get uh, into an exchange and it's blocked and it's, or it's blocking you uh, from, from, from a user volume perspective, if there are so many people that are trying to get on and trade that it is overloading the, the currency exchange, take a step back, take a second and, and, and do what smart investors do and just hold your money for a second, right? Because if everybody's jumping in there, then you, I mean, y'all tell me if I'm, I'm wrong here, but uh, it seems like that's, that's the least moment that you want to be involved in this. That's when everything is, is, is pushing, pushing, pushing. You've already missed it, right? If you, I don't know. If, yeah, but if, if it already, that's fine. But if that's when you're trying to get into it, I think that's dangerous. Yeah, but volume can also be selling. So, you know, a lot of people could be selling on the market, which, you, you know, it could be a good time to get a dip. So they think new users, new users, I mean, I don't know, but you think new users, they're not getting on to sell. Well, well, I guess it could be going yeah. exchange to exchange. You're right. We saw this back yeah. uh, in December around Christmas time, a couple days before Christmas, um, Bitcoin dropped and uh, everybody was trying to sell. And there was so much sell volume that Coinbase shut down temporarily uh, yeah. and stopped all all uh, withdrawals and deposits. And so people that were trying to sign up right then, that would have been a good time to sign up and buy it at a cheap price. But they uh, they couldn't because there were so many people just FUD out there and they were just selling, you know. So it, it goes both ways, really. So, Dustin, I saw a tweet the other day that, that said um, – that we're, we're basically we're, we're trading one master for another so we got right now we got these central banks that are that are kind of lauding over the entire financial system and we're trading them essentially for these large exchange systems and so it's kind of the same thing that's happening there they're, they're finding ways to kind of manipulate the market and keep people keep people um, from from being able to trade at will or, or tr trade freely well I mean if you're you can always go, you know, you don't have to use an exchange. Um, I mean, one, I haven't used it in, in years. And actually the very first time I bought a Bitcoin was on localbitcoins.com. And I met a guy at Starbucks and we transferred Bitcoin from his phone to my phone on the, the wallet we had set up. And, you know, no exchange used at all. Straight up, just uh, transfer the Bitcoin right there uh, while drinking some coffee. <laughs> that's awesome so i mean yeah there's there's other methods of, of getting it i mean it's not as convenient you know you got to contact the person or you know i guess i honestly haven't been on local bitcoins in forever i'm sure they've probably made it a little easier to get in contact with the people you want to um, buy the the altcoins from but um there's usually a premium on there too they're wanting to sell it for a little higher than the market price as well um, most of the time, but Justin, you got to figure out who buys the coffee. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Most important, the seller. <laughs> Always the seller. Default to the seller at all times. Yeah. That's funny. All right, so now I guess we're we're gonna move into uh, coin debate. You you. Coin debate. All right, I guess I'm gonna have to referee this. Um, so Dustin, are you are you taking a sure. pro or the con on Neo? I, uh, well, I don't think there's, anybody could take a con on Neo right now. <laughs> I don't know if there's going to be much of a debate on this one. Right. Everybody right. should be in on Neo. <laughs> yeah, if you aren't already in, get in. Yeah. Get you should have gotten in a long time ago. Yeah. Wait, so still, you guys are saying still get in? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. I think Neo uh, has potential to be where uh, Ethereum is, for I, sure. I got into Neo a while ago, and, um, no, I, I think I think Neo will pass Ethereum. I think Neo is better than Ethereum, definitely, um, for a few reasons. I mean, they're both trying to oh, accomplish the same thing. Real quick, yeah. This is not trading advice. This is our opinion. I don't think we said that in the beginning. <laughs> so uh, definitely not financial. Standard, advice. Yeah, standard disclaimer applies. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, Neo and. And that's uh, that they they pr produce. You can you can code uh, smart contracts on them. Um, you can produce your ICOs on them and decentralized apps. So they both basically do the same thing. Um, but in 
different ways. First of all, NEO is backed by the Chinese government. It's the first cryptocurrency to be backed by a government ever. Um, so I mean, that alone, having a government uh, say that they trust your cryptocurrency, especially a government like China, where they don't trust anything, um, that gives them a lot of power right there. Uh, it's the first open source public blockchain project in the world. Um, and Ethereum doesn't have that. So uh, they also have, uh, because NEO is a proof of stake coin as opposed to a proof of work coin like uh, Ethereum, um, you you have incentives for holding the coin. Uh, and they use this coin called gas, which is another token that I think right now it's even trading at $85, $90, somewhere around there. Um, and so just for holding your NEO in your wallet, and you can't hold it in exchange and get this, but on a wallet, uh, you get an incentive for powering the network. Um, ICOs are being developed right now, and I think that's one of the reasons that um, it's jumped up in price, uh, because there's a bunch of ICOs being developed on NEO right now. What sets NEO apart from uh, Ethereum in terms of ICOs is, in decentralized apps is that you can code in different languages other than Solidity. In Ethereum, there's a whole new language created for Ethereum called Solidity. Uh, with NEO, you can code with uh, C Sharp, Java, and they're in talks to uh, be able to write in Python and Go in the future. So um, there's just a lot. There's a lot more room uh, for growth with NEO than than Ethereum, I, I believe. Um, also, NEO can handle 10,000 transactions per second. Ethereum, 15 per second. So it just in the future, it's just gonna be. It just to me, it seems like a better uh, smart contracts ICO base than Ethereum. Ethereum was the kind of the first one to do it, but Neo took what Ethereum did and just made it better in my opinion. So I think it's I a better it's just a Another great thing about Neo in comparison to uh, Ethereum is the supply. It's got a lower supply, so that you know that's gonna drive up demand and price quicker. Definitely. I love Does the government Neo. I love Neo. Did, so does the government have control over the supply? Like, can they increase the supply? No, no, it's 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 a held supply, just like Ethereum is. Um, and that's and and that's one reason that they did the proof of stake instead of proof of work. And don't get me wrong, Ethereum is in talks to do proof of stake as well, um, you know, down the line because they Ether, you know, not a lot of people know this, but the Ether token, which you what you were exchanging on the uh, on the exchanges, that's that's Ethereum's gas. The ether that you buy is Ethereum's gas. So that's powering the network. Um, but NEO does it a little bit differently and they incentivize the proof of stake by providing you, they literally call it gas, uh, but it, that's what fuels the network. They, they provide you that incentive to buy the coin and, and literally hold it. They want you to hold it because you holding it validates uh, transactions and you know then they incentivize you. So it's, it's a great concept they got going on. Awesome. And today, um, today is uh, Sunday the fourteenth, right? Yep. Seven seven forty six in the PM. And if you look at the crypto markets, they are bleeding but right now. Not Neo. Not Neo. Not. <laughs> All right. So I think the winner of that debate is going to be Neo. <laughs> it's Neo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, guys. All right, so uh, it's time to move on. We're going to talk about our breakout coin of the week. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna go in first on this one. I'm going to talk about NavCoin. NavCoin is a super cool coin. It's one of the privacy coins. So I think it's traditionally thought of as uh, you know, your, your, your first thought is uh, something to do with the Silk Road or uh, some of these kind of uh, more uh, illicit uh, activities. But uh, it's unique in that it's, uh, it's on a dual blockchain. Uh, so that means you can have your public transactions and do kind of traditional transactions on on one chain. And if you don't trust the person uh, intrinsically that you're that you're doing business with, um, and you have a second blockchain which runs side by side, and it's a pretty small market cap, uh, 264 million uh, right now, uh, trading at four dollars and twenty five cents. 
and it's got a 30 second transaction time, which is uh, kind of top of the line right now. The other thing is they have wallets across um, all different platforms. So they have uh, Windows, they have Mac wallets, they got Raspberry Pi, they got uh, Android uh, I just wallets. got my Pi wallet. I'm working on setting it up right now. <laughs> yeah, and that, that that's cool because I, I think uh, the, the more the more the more people that you can access easily, uh, I think the the, the broader that a uh, that, that a coin will go. Also, a uh, proof of stake coin, uh, and you get uh, up to five percent interest uh, yeah, just awesome. holding the coin, which is which is. That's super why cool. I'm building my Nav Pi box. Now, so okay, so here, here is the here's the downside to Nav. Even though it's my coin of the week, I gotta. So the CEO is a guy named Craig McGregor. He was the lead developer at uh, Spark Ventures, um, which is New Zealand's largest telecom uh, company. It's like our Comcast or AT and T for New Zealand. So I mean, take that for what it's worth. I don't know what that means uh, in New Zealand. Um, the, the other thing is, uh, if you look at his LinkedIn profile, he only completed three semesters at Auckland University. That was his computer science uh, experience. And he did a one-year yeah. course. Something yeah. But, I mean, Bill Gates, how, how much college did he complete? I don't know. It was more than three semesters. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just saying he only did three semesters. And um, uh, he did a one-year course at uh, – Something called Media Design School. Literally, it's just called Media Design School. So, take it for what's take it for what it's worth. I mean, the guy could be a savant. I don't know, um, but uh, he needs to clean up his LinkedIn profile before I throw him any throw any of my uh, my <laughs> my coins. Start again. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not too late. I mean, I think it's got a lot of growth potential. Um, mm -hmm. It's a cool it, of the privacy coins. I think it's definitely my favorite. He just, you know, he's a little sketchy. <laughs> so. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, All right. so my coin of the week is going to have to be OMG, let me say go. Um, we've seen a, um, a recent spike in the price. Uh, I think that has a lot to do. They just announced that they're going to be releasing their wallet in quarter one. Uh, so sometime, you know, early this year, they should uh, have their mobile wallet, which is a big part of, let me say go, uh, because it is a payment transaction system. Um, also, McDonald's Thailand recently announced that it will use let me say go for online and mobile payments. Um, so, you know, get your quarter pounder uh, with, you know, Amisego, which is crazy. Also, uh, Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, I think everybody knows him in the space. Um, he, said, he said that Amisego was his favorite proof of stake token that is currently um, out there. So that's, that's high praise coming from uh, Vitalik. So, you know, I think they, uh, they got a bright week in store. All right, great. Dustin. Well, I'm not going to tell you a whole lot about Litecoin. Um, I didn't, I mean, it's Litecoin. It's a fork off of Bitcoin. Yeah, everybody knows Litecoin. And uh, so I'm not going to go into any explanation of what it is. And I am only picking Litecoin because of the technicals. I'm not picking it because of anything special. Ever, you know, it's Litecoin. But it's, uh, it's at the bottom of a resistance level right now. So if it gets some support, I think it could have a very good week. If it doesn't, it can have a bad week, and I could lose this contest for the week. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, we, we appreciate you guys logging in. That about wraps everything up for this in episode of the Centralized Talk. Please send in your questions and comments below. Uh, you can email us at info at masteringbitcoins.com or check us out on, the, on Twitter and social media at masterbcs. And as always, feel free to post your questions in the forum, guys. We do read these, uh, and we will answer them on air. So uh, any questions that you guys have, uh, please let us know. We're, we're happy to answer them. And uh, it just gives us a little bit uh, more of a way to communicate with you guys, and we really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. So um, with that, I, I think uh, th that about wraps it up. I appreciate you guys coming out. Peace.